Hello everyone, welcome. Today is day 17 of Advent of Code, starting in just over three minutes from now. Yesterday went really well for me, and the day before also went really well. Um, so I'm hoping to continue this trend. You know, yesterday was the best I've done in a long time, basically since day nine, which was the only other shining day for me. Um, so yeah, hoping for a repeat performance. Welcome in everyone. I'm glad that you could join. Um, I won't be interacting much with chat during my, my as I saw, but afterwards I will go over the solution, or at least over my solution, um, and answer any questions on that. And um, I guess, so me and Joshua Wise over on YouTube have been having a bit of a back and forth about just good discussion about how to prepare for these things. And I don't prepare for these things. Um, and really, you know, our conclusion was that to be really good at this, you really would need to just practice a ton. Um, for me, however, my, my goal is just to um, use my software engineering and computer science skills and if that helps me do well at programming problems, uh, programming competitions like this, then so be it. If it doesn't, then that's fine too. And so far, um, except for day 13, it served me pretty well. Day 13 really required a bit of a math insight that I just didn't have um, until Twitch chat helped me out. Um, but today, you know, we have a chance. We have a chance, hopefully. And last night I read the input file before I started reading the problem, which I think helped. So I'm gonna do that again tonight. Um, and then I think I'm also gonna to skip down to the conclusion, read that real quick, and then hop back up to the explanation as well. And we'll, we'll see how this goes. Maze again. Three dimensional grid, every three dimensional single cube. Okay, so this is an adjacencies problem. Let's do So that's our grid. Let's um, do this, do that. Grid adjacencies. Okay, so row call.
So I guess it's constrained by the sides of the, the region. Um, so let me just pull this in to here actually. So we'll get rid of this dy dx dz and then we can do dz and then here oh um, I deleted too much stuff Wait, um, Get rid of that. Okay. So, oh, I guess we can actually generate these. Um, Okay, and then we don't actually need this. So that gives us all the directions if dx equals dy equals dz equals zero. Continue, I believe. One, two, three. Two, two, two in here. Okay, I think that looks right. Okay. equals if grid r c equals then actives r c zero equals true
Okay. Um, a Do the list. This is redundant, but whatever. Um,
This isn't gonna work. Um...
what? Okay, so we start out here. This is not going well, guys. Um, Like everything's shifted by one. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Totally off by one error. Um...
oh one oh zero one zero oh one two zero two oh two one two two zero one two all zero all true okay so that's good Oh, shoot. It, it's infinite. It is infinitely expanding. Shoot, 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 shoot. This can definitely be combined.
I'm really worried about the uh, op <coughs> complexity of this. Actors remain actors or two or three neighbors. Yeah, um, I think that's what I have. If it's act, this is if it's active. If it has two or, if it's uh, not exactly two or three. I, I didn't, so Joshua, welcome. I didn't realize that I was supposed to do an infinite grid. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm just trying to figure out if that's even working. to three. Okay, that looks good. Eight, one, zero, one. That seems suspect. That seems real suspect on the column. Oh, I'm retarded. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm checking all of those. And then nothing changed. I think this is so negative one zero negative one row so up here zero uh, negative one I'm pretty sure that should be one, right? Um, let's see here. So there's dot hash dot 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 hash. Okay, so so if we go back one to here, and we go up one to here. So this is zero, zero, zero. This is 
zero, negative one, zero, or no, 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 the way. Zero, zero, negative one. And what are we looking at? Negative one, negative one, negative one. Um, Yeah, okay, so that is zero. And then this one, negative one on the on the row would be here. Um, negative one on the zero on the column. Oh, shoot, it's up here. Um, and then negative one here would be back to there. And then you have that one is the adjacent one, I think. Okay. I think the counting seems correct. Okay, so one, zero, one, negative one needs to be around. So this one seems, this seems, oh, wait, no. I am worried that
So nothing's changing. That's dumb. Let's see here. Well, it's, it's a number that is at least bigger. <laughs> um, okay, that's a good sign. So at this point now, it's just a matter of more debugging. Yeah, I have another off by one error. So this is like off by, oh, maybe if I print the, oh shoot. Um... Okay, that's fine, whatever. Um, it's a little bit concerning. Oh, cause Max, uh, this, oh, this is gonna be a total bug. Um, Zero R R C C Z Z min max min max min max. Oh. Okay, so it breaks down after this one. Am I depending on zeros anywhere? Why?
Let's see. I don't think it's this. It's it's got to be if active dot get a So if it's inactive, let's read these rules again. So why isn't this working? So let's just do if z equals zero and y r equals zero and c equals one one four so on the first cycle it's one okay on the next one it's four that's not good One O negative one. And what is the one that we're dealing with? O O one. O one O. Zero one zero.
Oh, crap. It just worked. Oh, I was forgetting to check the, um... Uh... Yes, four-way equals does work. Um, wow. I was forgetting to check the, the frickin... That was atrocious. Um, whether or not it was true or false in the dictionary. Wow, I'm just bad at this. Hello, everyone. If you're watching, welcome to this disaster today. Um, I mean, let's just do it. Let's just do this. Um, Um, really? Okay, hold on. Before I screw everything up, I'm already down enough time that it doesn't matter if I just copy everything. Um... do is we do all of that, RCZ, oh yeah. um, is there any other rules that we have to add, or is it literally just the same? Okay, um, so these rules still apply. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> um, grid adjacencies, right. Let's pull this down. And then grid adjacencies. What? Oh, because it's not A, it is... That was a disaster. I did gain a little bit on part two, but holy crap. Um, yeah, back to Tide with Easton. He actually won. I, I wonder, how did he do? He got, he was really fast today. 14 minutes on part one and then a three extra on part two. So that was impressive. Um, honestly, my incremental was not terrible. It was just that I took so freaking long to solve part one. Okay, so 
Kind of everything went wrong today. I don't know what else to say. Nice job, Adam. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna set me back a good good amount to be also losing there too. Yeah, Adam is Adam is on a roll. If he had um he missed a few days here that he he went back and did later. So he if he'd done it, then he would be really in, in contention. But now I'm back to forty six behind Colin. So that's pretty atrocious. Um, hey, yeah, ha, <laughs> everything went wrong. It's a lot of what happened to me. Well, yeah, I, I just, I mean, it was, 53 minutes is really unacceptable for this. I, I just, I thought that I would need to keep both true and false. And then I just forgot, like in a dictionary for each of the, each of the indices. And then I just forgot to, like, at all, like, um consider that here so it just didn't work um what do i do when the example given and the problem doesn't actually follow the rules yeah yeah joshua's right figure out where your interpretation interpretation of the rules is incorrect that's always the answer unless it's not but it, I mean, if it's not, then it's like a fluke of nature, and um, yeah. Um, so, holy crap! Holy frick! Everything went wrong. Nothing went right here. I mean, I guess kind of having this was good, but then I thought that I was having to bound it by the, um, I, I thought, okay, so the big problem that I had is I, I saw it was an infinite grid, but I thought it was only infinite in the Z direction. Like, cause the first, the first two are, they don't actually change in the X and Y direction. And I didn't scroll down to the fricking second cycle and see, that you have to expand your grid in the x and y direction. So I was only expanding in the z direction until like half an hour into this whole thing. And it was just an utter and complete disaster. Um, once I figured out that I had to do this, then it was all smooth sailing. But um, let's just clean up some utilities in here. Um, maybe I should make a more generic grid adjacencies. function that like deals with arbitrary dimension dimensionality honestly maybe that'll make me just calm down and feel better about my life um, um, which is quite necessary right now let's just continue cleaning up some stuff up here yeah that was just again reading comprehension and just like not being retarded, like, I don't know, I, I just, that was really dumb. Um, and then I had a bug just with my checking whether or not things were active. Because um, I was using a dictionary like a, I don't know why. I, don't ask me why I decided a dictionary was a good idea. Because it never was a good idea for this problem. Um, but I thought it was because, who knows why. <laughs> um, uh, so... The dictionary, the problem is you have to check w whether or not it's true or false. And I was too dumb to remember whether or not to check whether or not it was true, true or false. And so like a set makes more sense, I think, because you can just remove an add, um, which is much like more simple of an operation to think about than setting true or false in the dictionary. Um, at least for me. Maybe everyone else is less incompetent than I am, which is highly likely. Um, okay, this was a this was this code is a mess as well. Um, let's just get rid of some of these prints. Um, maybe I should have a metric. We should make a new metric for like uh, for these problems of like print statement metric. 
print statement to actual line of code that does stuff metric. Um, and obviously lower is better. Um, Yeah, a default dict probably would have been the way to go, but uh, and, and normally I do go with default dict, but I, I think that once I converted it to a set, it made more sense in my brain. Um, yes, JB3182, uh, 842. Yeah, I did run it on the small part one sample and it worked eventually. Once I got it to work, then I was like, okay, this is it. And I just submitted it um, with the, the full example. The example that I did was, was pretty nice if I had read it. Ah, so Josh was in talking about Lua. You can't use an a, a tuple as your key. That would be annoying. Yeah, this would this is having having tuples as keys is is pretty nice. Okay, so let's clean this up, and then I'll explain what I did because it's a total mess. First thing to do, I think, is generalize my grid adjacencies function. This will be interesting. Um, So it'll take in a tuple um, instead of row call and like as, as separate things. And then of tuple int int etc. And it'll be a generator of int dot dot dot. Um, and then let's see here. Uh, in dimension. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I think I'll use product here. And how does this work? So we pass in a bunch of iterables. So, negative one, zero, one times oh, that's not, that doesn't do what I want. Um, there we go, times times len, basically the number of coordinates. Oh wait, no, um, it's just this, it's just this. There we go. And then we have to change the grid adjacencies to take in. And this actually can be none. Okay, 
so look, it actually works. Um, so these are the, those are all the D, um, deltas. All of that, if all d in d equals zero in delta. Else we're going to yield row or um, C plus D for C D in zip chord. Delta. Oh my gosh, it worked. That's amazing. Man, I wish I had that like an hour ago. <laughs> um, so 218, let me just check that that's the right answer. So this is a generic um, general Uh, solver, which is cool. General um, grid adjacencies function. So I can get rid of grid adjacencies too um, and use use that grid adjacencies here and we should end up with the same thing. Yeah, so okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, so what's going on with this grid adjacencies function? Oh, I need to do the bounds. Um, so let's do D comma B and bounds. And zip delta bounds if uh, chord I plus the delta. Um, maybe I need inclusive as well. I think that should do what we want for grid adjacencies. Um, let's just check it with Yeah, we'll just go with that. Hopefully the bounds logic is correct. Um, I guess we can we can test this with if I get where's the other print that I'm missing? There we go.
um, zero one zero Zip argument number two must support iteration. So delta, what is delta? That should just be a tuple. Oh, shoot. That's why I named it D earlier. Um, oh, that's not good. Oh, it's fine. It's totally fine. It was just printing out everything. Yeah, so that it's this thing here. Which is 26. Okay. Wait. What? Maybe I shouldn't do this right now. <laughs> Let's just maybe only do this. Oh, I am just bad at coding, guys. Look at this. There we go, and if okay, that looks more like it's seven. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, those look right. Those look right. Okay, so bounds work now that I've you know actually fixed it. Um. Okay, that seems like it'll be useful. Um, it, uh, of the coordinate, and for each one, the
Well, hmm. Iterate through all of the for the n dimensions. It's just um, the Okay. Um, let's see, is there a better way of doing this? If we'll leave it. I can refactor it later. Um, so this was pretty useful. Um, as it printed out the grid. Man, man, part one really let me down. Part one was atrocious, guys. Absolute crap. Really disappointing. Really, really, really disappointing. Okay, so parsing the grid was fine. I went into true falses. That worked out pretty well. So you just have a true false matrix effectively. Um, and then we calculate, we don't need these. I guess we do for here, um, but we only need them once, so. No need to actually store these. Um, I, I I didn't need I didn't need these for the problem. I thought I did for for calculating and uh, the row the number of rows and columns that I would go over. But it's an infinite grid. <sighs> that took me too long to figure out, guys. That took me so long to figure out. That was really really sad. Anyway, row call. For each row call, look in the grid, see if it's active. And then if it is, then add the active in. And we get row call zero. Um, so we always add the Z parameter of zero because it's the zeroth uh, Z index. So the next thing that we do is we go through um, uh, six iterations. So that's what the problem says. Six cycle boot process completes. So, mm,
what we do is we set us up, we copy, make a copy of the active set, um, and then we calculate in a very messy fashion um, the min and the max of a, of the activities sequence for well, not each the the activity sequence, the individual elements of the activities sequence. So the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the z coordinate. Um, so let's see here. I keep having to do min and max. So let's add a utility. Oh, before we do, we'll add our grid adjacencies. Function in here. Um, so the, the nice thing with this old grid adjacencies one is that it, it handles different types of directions, but I don't think we need this to be perfectly honest. Let's just get rid of it. If we need it, it'll shoot me in the foot. Um, and I can, I can go back to previous days. So So, oh yeah, um, So the min, we want to do QRS, okay, math. Okay, um, and then for x in sequence, There we go. And then let's do Let's see int in max python something like this
let's just use the math one and we'll convert these to Um, and let's get the type variable K in here. Let's just do that. Let's just make it all ints. Okay, that's really pretty clean now. Spin max. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, I think this is pretty Pythonic. Um, change these variable names to more reasonable stuff. There we go. So once we once we calculate the min r, so the idea here is that for each 
of the six iterations, we calculate the min and the max in the x, y, and z directions. I called it row, call, and z directions. But you could have easily done um, r, c, and uh, x, y, and z. And I just added this new seek min max function to help me out in the future. Um, and then we make sure to do minus one, um, just so that we get padding on either side, uh, and then plus two so that we get padding on the, the high side as well. And then we do, we just co compute the cell is just the, the, the combination of all of those. And then we um, go through all of the adjacencies for each cell. And uh, this gives us um, adjacent coordinates. If it's in, if the adjacent coordinate is active, then we increment the count, and we just keep this count variable for each cell. And then we just apply the rules. If the cell is not active, but there's three active ones around it, then we add it to the active set. Um, if it is um, hello metabytes with a party of three welcome um, glad you could uh, come and join I, I'm doing some refactoring right now um, today didn't go so great but um, it went it did go um, I did solve it and it was un in under an hour um, but I did not get top 1,000, and I lost pretty badly to some of my friends on the leaderboard. Um, yeah, it, it just went. That's about it. Um, part two um, was pretty slow, so it barely went. Um, anyway, back to the explanation. Yeah, th this rule is just if if it's... Uh, wait, how does this work? Oh, this is in the active case. Um, so if it's not in two or three, then basically what it means is that this, um, this cell needs to be made inactive. Actually, I think, does this work? Yeah, we can just get rid of that check as well. So let me actually copy this to part two. Um, as well. Um, yeah, part part one. Um, yeah, part one was just terrible for me. As well, I didn't. My issue, metabytes, was that I didn't realize that it was infinite in all, in all directions. So once we're done, once we're done with setting this new active set, we just assign actives to the new actives. I don't know if the, I, I figure there's probably a better way of doing this, but you know, I think it's fine. This set doesn't ever get too big, I don't think. You know, there's only 1908 at the end of part two. Um, and honestly, I didn't want to figure out how to, it's just too much work to iterate and mutate at the same time. In fact, it, you shouldn't do that anyway. So I think this is the way to go. And then at the very end, just return the number of actives and that just solves it. Yeah, uh, by the way, anybody who's watching, thank you for joining. And um, if you have any questions, just shoot them in chat. I'll, I'll be willing to. Um... Yep. Uh, Azul Flame, um, I do have two different um, sets, really. They're not arrays. But here I have an active set, and uh, then I, I reset it down here. Um, uh, I so deep copy is not necessary for this because it's all integers or tuples, really. Um, so my actives, if I if I can, I'll print it out for you guys. 
So it's it's a it's a list of it's a set of tuples, which means that um, uh, the the tuples don't need to be deep copied because they get they just get the value. If I used lists, then I would have had to deep copy. Now, when I was solving it, I just used deep copy just to make sure. But now that I'm now that I'm done, I'm kind of refactoring it a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah. So you could you could definitely um, instead of doing this, you could store um, some. You could make this a dictionary and then have like a concept of of active, inactive, or inactive transitioning to active, active transitioning to inactive. That would also work and would save uh, would save half of the memory. Um, so that that might be a as old friend flame that sounds like a really nice nice solution there. Okay, so moving on to part two. Everything's the same except for now we have an extra dimension. So when we add to the active set, we have to add a fourth dimension. Um, we have to calculate the min and max for another dimension here. Um, I, I just finished refactoring this out. Seek min max just gives you the minimum and maximum of a sequence of integers. Um, And then I also made, I just recently, like after I solved, made my grid adjacencies function generic over arbitrary coordinates. Uh, like coordinate uh, dim dimensions. So so now this is generic over, over her, over the, over both like any any number of dimensions that I need to get adjacencies for. Um, so I'm using it for both the grid adjacencies of part one and the grid adjacencies for part two. And let me just, so <laughs> when I was solving, I couldn't use A because I was already using A somewhere else. Um, so I'm just gonna clean this up and use A here now. Um, and let's see here. I guess I'll just note um, that, first of all, let's clean this up. Um, Yeah, so it's the same. You just have, I, I just used another for loop, um, which worked. It's slow, but it works, and it's it's good enough in my opinion. Yeah, part two was great. I solved it in what was my delta time? I can look at it here. Three minutes and forty six seconds. That was that was super amazing. I just couldn't, for the life of me, solve part one. It took me fifty three minutes. I'm so pissed about that. Um. Yeah, and it's really set me back on my private leaderboard. I'm forty six behind the leader, and you know. Eh. 20, 28 or something behind McPanda. So, yeah, I mean, if I had solved this at all, in a, if I had like figured this out faster, then that would have been way nicer. But um, yeah, total, total disaster today. Um, and my lead on Easton has evaporated. Okay, yeah, so there are a few people who have in another chat that I have that are complaining that the the uh, example was wrong as well. So 
So yeah, maybe the example is wrong. Maybe I'm just dyslexic and that helped me out today because I just ignore the fact that my results were different. <laughs> um, that is highly likely, guys. That is definitely highly likely. Okay. Yeah, so this is... Um, O of, oh, good grief, N to the 4. Kind of. Where N is the max dimension in any direction. So this is pretty, pretty bad. Um, Oh. I see. The viewport is sliding around. I mean, I didn't even look at... Okay, so where does it say this, guys? Um... Oh, that makes total sense now. I had an issue on part one where I, everything was shifted down by one. And, and I was really confused, but this must be on cycle, after cycle one, it must shift down by one. Oh, that makes total sense. Wow, okay. That makes sense. Thanks, JB31842. Yeah, by the way, thank you all for hopping in. I really appreciate it. And thanks for the raid metabytes. Um, if you find have found any of this at all entertaining or educational, um, please give me a follow. If you hate it, then just don't tell anybody that uh, uh, um, that that I'm bad. <laughs> okay. Maybe there's a way to... Like this, this seems kind of bad. I think it's fine. It's whatever. Could be better. Um, so let me just do add a bit of a description to part one. Part one. Each of the six iterations is whole of n cubed. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's about it. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think that I don't think that we're the only ones who were confused by that. And then it, it, I mean it makes sense. It's it's you know, it's Conway's effectively. So you, you kind of have this exp ever expanding grid in many, many directions. Um Yeah, that makes sense now. Okay. Um what went wrong? What went wrong? Um, well, all of part one went all of part one went wrong, I'd say. There were two major mistakes that I made. 
The first major mistake was that I didn't realize that it was an infinite grid in all of the directions. So that was a big problem. Um, yeah, I feel really dumb for not noticing that. Second thing that happened was that I initially was using a dictionary to store the actives, which I think would have, I think is fine. If I had done it right, the problem is that I here, I was counting anything that was in the dictionary. I was doing like basically actives, like just looking at, at the keys and I wasn't checking if the value was true or false. Oh, that's what it was. Oh. I'm so bad at this. I think the thing to learn from this, um, for me at least, is that uh, grid, grid problems are not problems that I can just kind of bang out. I mean, I just have to take take the hit, take a little bit more time, but at least do it right, and maybe then I can solve within solve them and not be two thousandth place. I actually kind of like today's problem. It was okay. Besides hating grids, I thought it was an interesting, interesting idea. Um, I actually wonder, is there a way that I can just like be better at, at these, these sorts of things? Like, how do I, how do I, how do I improve? Thank you for watching. Um, if you're on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and come over to Twitch and follow me over there. You'll get a notification when I go live. I'm doing this every single evening. So, um, join me again tomorrow for another disaster and we will be doing what day 18.